Let's take a look at the headlines. Indiana coming in 4-4, four four, Iowa undefeated. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Bob, what are the headlines? Well, for Indiana, Mark, this is a great opportunity. Upset Iowa tonight. You're the biggest story in college football. For Iowa, Kirk Ferentz said it best yesterday. They're 8-0. They easily, though, could be 4-4. Four and four. Are they for real, or will their good fortune run out? Second and short, Willis trying to get to the edge. Turns the corner. Touchdown, Hoosiers. A great beginning for Indiana. On the opening drive, they march it down the field for the score. They've got to get to the four for a first down. Chapel into the end zone. Touchdown, Hoosiers. What a catch by Evans. Ben Chapel put it right where it had to be for his ninth touchdown pass of the season. That was a great throw. Double coverage. Sean Prater, A.J. Eads. Football game against Northwestern. So continuity in this Iowa program, Mark. They've been here before. Here's McNutt on the reception, has a first down, and then some pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Finds Andre Brewer with the 51-yard touchdown score. And Stanzi going up on the post. Complete at the four-yard line to Johnson Julianos. First and goal. Another big play, and it's first and goal. Wager. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Are you back on the bandwagon now? With both feet. You are jumping off that bandwagon, Mark, before that kickoff. And all of a sudden, this whole stadium is back on the bandwagon with you. Hawkeye Nation's come to life. Excellent block by the center, Eubanks, and also Cal Calloway, the right tackle. Indiana still with the timeout. Third down and eight. Little blitz coming. Picked up. That one, there is no doubt. No bobble. Touchdown, Hoosiers. DeMarlo Belcher making the grab. Under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Morse the lone back beside Stanzi. Given plenty of time, and he's picked off. And this one could come back for a pick six. Jones brought down inside the five. The fourth turnover of the day for Iowa. For Indiana, number 41. You're going to see him lined up as the wing right here. Right here's Deadman. They usually run to him or throw to him on some kind of play action. He's kind of an H-back kind of guy. Just watch him. Coming Willis, in motion right here. Willis is the lone back. Play fake. And batted down from behind. It's loose. Iowa on the move. Tyler Sass. Gonna take it back. Trick or treat. Iowa City. <laughs> wow. That's about it. <laughs> wow. Look at the disbelief. It's been that kind of season for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Tyler Sash, six interceptions on the season, Mark. I got to see the replay to see exactly what happened. Still don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure either, Bob. It came loose, and Sash... With a mad dash to the end zone. And I guess that's what you call pounding a rock. Let's take a look at it again. That's a pinball. <laughs> a pinball interception and touchdown for the Hawkeyes. Third down and six for the Hoosiers. They'll get to the five for a first down. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Hoosiers. Turner with a grab. 
look again. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Spavay, Iowa's best corner. One of the best corners, according to Phil Parker, to ever have played at Iowa, is beat on man-to-man -man coverage. And we're not sure that he actually got those. Oh, he dragged that right foot. That right foot might have been dragging behind him, and they're going to review this one. Official timeout. The previous play is under further review. Another call against the Hoosiers. It's two for Bill Lynch. The only difference on this one, this one was overturned. Where the last one, there was not enough indisputable evidence. And you know the argument. Anytime there's an 8 no team that's ranked number four in the BCS with so much riding on these calls. But that call was so close. Here's right? a field goal attempt, and he pushed it wide, right, right. And that is a huge win for the Iowa Hawkeyes on a couple of fronts. Uncle Mo back in Iowa colors right now with 537 to go in the third quarter. Back to Kinnick Stadium right after this. On first and ten, Stanzi trying to recapture his rhythm and his confidence. Marvin McNutt with the catch. And Marvin making a house call. Wow! Touchdown! Late the game, man. Third and three. Chapel directing traffic. Almost intercepted. Broken up nicely by Prater, intended for Deadman, and it's fourth down for the Hugers against Purdue a few years back in 2002. The reborn Ricky Stanzi wide open. Johnson Julianos do you believe it. 66 yards for the score. <laughs> Halloween just got a whole lot better for the fans in Iowa City. Hey, Mark, we talk about pound the rock, the consistent hammer it out. Iowa hockey, the Hawkeyes, these last two plays, that had nothing to do with pounding the rock. <laughs> I mean, you talk about two home runs. I mean, if you're an Iowa fan this year, You've aged. You have <laughs> aged if you're an Iowa fan. But what a way to go if they can win out, huh? Trying to keep that I mean, magical season alive. A perfect 8 0. This has been kind of par for the course. And that one definitely picked off. Prater got another chance and makes good on this one. And a flag thrown back at the 35 in the area where the interception was made. By number nine of the intercepting team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, Iowa. First and 10, Stanzi. He's thrown two touchdowns on his last two attempts. This one complete to Moyaki. And Moyaki chopped down at the 27 yard line. A first and 10 coming up for the Iowa Hawkeyes. This would be the all time comeback to me. Just the flow of this game. Third and two, Wager, touchdown. Mark, as good as it is for Kirk Ferentz in Iowa, that's how bad it is if you're Indiana and Bill Lynch. Defensively, they have just given up huge plays here in the second half, the fourth quarter of this game. And it's amazing how this game has switched in the fourth quarter. A monumental meltdown for Indiana and a huge impossible comeback by the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kirk Ferentz says, hey, those computers don't have eyes. If they did, they'd say, are you kidding? Hey, coach, I got a little something for you. Maybe these newfangled computers can see. Maybe they are number one. 9-0 is 9-0, Mark Jones. <laughs> 
hand off to Wager. Wager looking to score and put some more on the board. Touchdown, Iowa. Just another typical Hawkeye win, right? <laughs> Right out of central casting, just the way that Kirk Ferentz scripted it. His third touchdown today, Brandon Wager. I mean, I mean they have 484 yards and 42 points. This is the same Iowa team we saw the first three quarters. That pass uh, picked off at the 45-yard hey. line. Just one more for the defense that leads the nation in interceptions. A.J. Eads with the pick that time. Perfect season continues for Iowa. 9-0 overall, 5-0 in conference play. Ohio State, they get in a couple of weeks up in Columbus, sitting there at 5-1. And, and Wisconsin at 3-2 and, and down the line. And you know what? You think about Brad Banks and Fred Russell and Chad Greenway and Matt Roth and, you know, what about that team? That was a special team, but I'm not sure that they have anything on this year's edition of the Iowa Hawkeyes, and that's a pretty good formula for winning a championship. And I'll tell you something, Mark. You know, I have marquee player. We have marquee player on there. Well, Ricky Stanzi, to me, he may be a no-name guy, but he's a marquee player the way he bounced back today, man. I, I give a lot of credit to that young guy right there. Certainly flipped the switch and flipped the script in the fourth quarter. Was it 27 points in the fourth quarter? Yeah. <laughs> An incredible run to the finish line for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 42 to 24, the final score. What a Halloween. A memorable, indelible one for the Hawkeyes as they stay perfect. They kept hammering away. And this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Bob Davey and our entire crew. I'm Mark Jones. They keep hammering that rock here in Iowa City, and it's all good as we go back to Reese, Mark, and Lou in the studio. So long, everybody. Oh, just another typical Iowa win, and Joe Paterno hoping that it will be business as usual on Halloween against Northwestern. It's been half a century since the Wildcats won on Halloween, and are hoping to turn the apple cart upside down against Joe Pye and the Nittany Lions today. It comes up in, oh, just about an hour.